Good evening and welcome. Tonight, army intensifies onslaught against Boko Haram terrorists, kills 75 of them in the month of June alone. Flash floods wreak havoc in Abel Kutadi, the state capital, as residents count losses after heavy rainfall. Federal government holds special interdenominational all prayer session against COVID-19 pandemic. And Spain reimposes another round of lockdown in Galicia following fresh outbreak of COVID-19, plus sports stories. We begin with security and troops of Operation Lafia Dole say at least 75 terrorists from the camps of Boko Haram and Iswap were neutralized in the month of June in the northeast region of the country. According to defense spokesman Major General John Enenche, the military also recorded some casualty in the operation with one officer killed and another injured. He, however, says 35 persons, including 28 women and 16 children, were rescued from the terrorists. Major General Enenche explains that four insurgents, including two women, were captured and later identified to be the wives of the local Boko Haram leader, Ajajingi, in Madagali local government area of Adamawa State. Meanwhile, the president has condemned yesterday's attack on a United Nations aid helicopter by Boko Haram terrorists, describing it as dastardly and unfortunate. President Muhammadu Buhari says it is yet another desperate rear guard action by the terrorists who have been under intense pressure from the military. He's, however, reassuring the international community and Nigerians that the attack, which claimed the lives of two people, including a five-year-old baby, will not go without severe consequences. He asked that the security of foreigners and Nigerians remain the top priority of this administration. Staying with security, the Taraba state governor, Darius Ishaku, is worried over the unabated activities of bandits, saying they are taking advantage of the Tiv Jukun crisis to harm residents of the state. Fielding questions from journalists in the state capital, Governor Isiako assures residents that security operators are on top of the situation to restore peace to affected communities. It's unfortunate <coughs> that uh, we've been battling crises since uh, I came on board. We've been solving them. And even this one, we are going to surmount it. We are doing our best. It will soon be over. But what I always tell people is to give me peace and I will give them development. Because without the peace, the development is also not meaningful. And we will work hard to make sure that the peace is gotten. And uh, I think we are on the course. We are doing the best we can. Our own, the recent one is combined with criminality. Uh, criminals are now involved, armed robbers, kidnappers. They have turned it to a business. The security agencies are doing their best, and I think they are on top of it. And by the grace of God, we will be done with that, and peace will return. And in Kaduna, the state government is asking warring parties in the communal conflict in Zango Kataf and Kauru local government areas of the state to sheath their swords and embrace peace. Following the violence that claimed some lives on June 11th among the Atiyap, Fulani, Chawai and Hausa communities over ownership of farmlands, troops were deployed to the two local government areas and a 24-hour curfew also imposed. The State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Mr. Samuel Arwan, who visited the area to assess the situation, says curfew is part of steps to manage the tension and restore calm. The position of Kaduna State Government is very clear. Uh, the law is there. If there is any problem, all sides must recourse uh, to the law. That is very, very important. Uh, no one is allowed to take the law on his own. That is why uh, we are appealing to people. Because peace is very, very important. Peace is priceless. Uh, it's not something that uh, you can uh, compromise. It's not something that you can toy with. Without peace, there will be no development. Because uh, peace is the backbone of any purposeful 
uh, development. There was an uh, incident that happened in Zongo and Qatar for local government. And because we share boundary, uh, a boy, a chawe by native, is staying in a, a shower, which was found dead when in his farm. And the corpse was carried and dumped near Bakyunkoji, near that bridge. So the youth here in Bakyunkoji, seeing that is their brother, and their family compound is here in Bakyunkoji. So they started demonstrating. They started burning tires. While the security men came and uh, asking them to stop that because it is not here that the thing happened. And because of the intervention of the security men, the, the, the situation was calmed. And since that day, we have been put into curfew. And uh, the residents of this Bakyunkoji area, as I'm talking to you, they had a meeting about the Chawe and the Hausa community. They discussed to a length and they understand and they shared views among themselves. We want the coffee to, to be lifted because we are ready to live in peace. Away from security issues to the environment, the Ogun State Government is asking residents who live along waterways and canals to relocate upland to reduce the effects of perennial flash floods that ravaged parts of Abelkuta, the state capital. But residents of the affected areas say the bridge they caved in was shoddily done as a remedial work by the state government last year. A ravaging flood water travels across communities in Ogun State capital, Abelkuta, submerging cars, overrunning bridges. With the flood, is a huge pile of waste washed aside and without any guesswork, the root cause of the flood is identified. When the water recedes, the cleanup and the draining begin with the effects of the flood still vivid. Some of the affected structures, which include this bridge at Ijeja Stadium, has been cordoned off to avoid human casualty. Residents say they've had to go through this routine over the years and now want the government lasting solution. This bridge caved in last year. We asked the government to help us redo it and then dredge the small stream that was, I mean, that's at the back of the community. But in their wisdom, they decided that they will do some remedial work. And the small remedial work was done there last year, which to me, to be frank, even though I'm not an engineer, was shoddy. Majorly it's because of uh, uh, garbage that is waste. You know, normally what we need around this area is dredging. They need to dredge in, year in, year out. So when there is dredging, the, the water flow will go smoothly. But the moment you have waste deposited in the waterways, then you have over flooding. After an assessment of the situation, the State Commissioner for Environment attributes the cost of the flood to unregulated human activities. He promises to take appropriate steps. We have gone around, you have seen some of the effects of human activities. We have seen the effect of refuse dumps. You saw the other one there that was basically blocked by refuse. Yes, government, what will government be able to do everything? Some of the buildings along the waterways have been marked for demolition. The government wants those affected to move upland and desist from erecting more structures on water channels. This year uh, has been predicted to have very heavy rainfall and that we advise people who are on these low-lying areas to you know, look, find some other safer, you know, um, higher grounds to go at least during this season. Um, so that you know, no lives and their properties will be lost. While the last may not have been heard of such ravaging flood, the government says it is making efforts towards rebuilding some of the affected roads and bridges and appealing to residents to dispose their waste without clogging the waterways. For more insight into cases of flooding across the country, we're now being joined on the News at 10 by the Director General of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, Mr. Clements Nze, who joins us from our studio in Abuja. Mr. Nze, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. So, NIMET had predicted earlier this year heavy rainfall uh, for more than the usual number of days that we're used to. But before these rains started, the pandemic set in, and now the rains are here. We fear a case of flooding and several cases of flooding almost every day. Would you say that as a country we're prepared for the season? Uh, thank you for having me tonight. Really the 
what we are witnessing today across the country, in Ogun State, in Lagos, in Rivers, and so on and so forth, have been as predicted in terms of NIMES rainfall prediction, amount of rainfall, and in our, our prediction in the agency, in terms of the LG that will be affected, it, as far as early as February, Lagos State government began serious activities, clearing some drainages in System 6, 4, 5, and so on and so forth in Lagos State and some other states too. But it looks like the COVID-19 you know, pandemic took the center stage that uh, action seems to have slowed down in terms of taking measures to avoid what we are witnessing. We could see the video clip regarding Ogun State. I could see also from that clip some areas I visited in 2018, July, mm. when there was a heavy rainfall, three-hour three rainfall on the 30th of July, 2018, between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., just flash flood. Finding no infiltration because of blockages here and there. In Abiokuta, in particular, I'm talking about mm. so much devastation took place in Abiokuta on the 30th of July, 2018. And it is repeating itself. It doesn't seem like something has been done by relevant authorities to prevent what we are witnessing this season. Yeah, and, and I know that uh, throughout, for the better part of last week, uh, here in Lagos, there were, there were, there were con days of continuous rainfall and there were a lot of flash floods. And now you see uh, states like the Ogun State Government trying to clear up, you know, uh, uh, drainages and waterways and so on. And in Lagos, you notice plastic bottles almost everywhere. Why do we always wait till, the, till, till when the rains are upon us that we begin to take action? That remains the challenge. Not taking you know, prompt action when predictions are made. NIMET on the 21st of January came on air to inform Nigerians about the expectations of rain in rainfall. For instance, Lagos State will be having about uh, between 240 and 270 days of rainfall this year. Ogun State may be between about 220 to 250 days of rainfall. And uh, it's very worrisome in the sense that uh, we are yet to enter into the peak of rainy season. For instance, for Lagos State, it's between March and uh, late November, or maybe first week of December, that's when the rain will cease in Lagos State. Likewise, Ogun State. And the peak of it is around October. If we are witnessing this level of devastation as early as June, July, I mean, it, uh, it portends some kind of worry for those of us who have been talking about uh, taking measures. You could see big these structures that are within the floodplain, barricading the natural flow of runoff or flood. Buildings, people dumping waste. You can see plastic things moving about. Speaking for said that human activities or anthropogenic activities of man has been you know, causing this flood, making it to be so severe. I'm not sure that we are really prepared, so to say. Yeah, and now, now the government is asking people to move on to dry land. And I'm sure that's not the only solution, though, but we'll talk about this some more uh, much later. Thank you again, Mr. Clement Nze, for speaking with us on the News at 10. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. In part two, after the break, the federal government holds special interdenominational prayer session against the COVID-19 pandemic. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories.
Army intensifies onslaught against Boko Haram terrorists, kills 75 of them in the month of June alone. Flash floods wreak havoc in Abel Kutadimu state capital as residents count losses after heavy rainfall. Federal government holds special interdenominational prayer session against COVID-19 pandemic. And Spain reimposes another round of lockdown in Galicia following fresh outbreak of COVID-19. Our website, channelstv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch channels, televisions, live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. Or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and Roku. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation is appealing to Christian leaders to help the fight against COVID-19 by educating their congregation on the dangers of what he describes as reckless confidence. He made the call at the Interdenominational Church Service organized by the Nigeria Interreligious Council, which held at the National Christian Center in Abuja. The church service had in attendance Christian leaders in different denominations, government officials, and is the culmination of three days of fasting and prayer seeking God's intervention in the fight against COVID-19 in Nigeria. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. As Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 assures us, if we humble ourselves, pray and seek his presence and turn from our wicked ways, he will listen from heaven and forgive our sins and restore our country and indeed our world. This is the central theme at the Interdenominational Church Prayer Service. We stand in the corporate anointing that is present in this assembly, in this national altar. God, we stand in this place of prayer to demand that in your mercy you bring restoration to our nation, our people, and our land. The figures of the pandemic in Nigeria justify the prayers by this gathering. Nigeria's index case was on February the 22nd, and just three months later, on the 28th of May, Nigeria recorded 8,900 cases and 259 deaths from COVID-19. By June the 27th, that number rose to 24,000 infections and 558 deaths. On July the 5th, the number of infections in Nigeria rose to 28,167 and 634 casualties. These figures should make people more cautious. If you have no business leaving your house, stay at home. It's scriptural. And I will underpin this with the quotation from Proverbs 14, 16, where the Bible says, The wise are cautious and avoid danger. Fools plunge ahead with reckless confidence and i see a lot of christians exhibiting reckless confidence and the bible describes them as fools the covid 19 pandemic should be fought on all fronts scientific and spiritual the church serves as a powerful enlightenment tool on non-pharmaceutical measures meant to keep nigerians safe during this pandemic <laughs> kayla magua Channels Television News.
There's been another high-profile death from COVID-19, this time in Benue State University, where the Deputy Vice-Chancellor in charge of academics, Professor Godwin Achinge, is the victim. Professor Achinge, who was also the Vice-Chairman of Benue State Action Committee on COVID-19, had earlier tested positive for the coronavirus. Channel Television gathered that he died this afternoon at an undisclosed hospital in Jos, the Plateau State capital. Five more COVID-19 patients have been discharged from various isolation centres here in Lagos. 18 of them are female, while the remaining 27 are male, including four foreigners. The COVID-19... The COVID-19 incident commander and Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu, said the patients have all tested negative and have been reunited with their families. This brings the number of successfully managed COVID-19 cases in the state to 1,740. Well, we do understand uh, 45 uh, uh, people have been discharged uh, from the uh, isolation centre here in Lagos. We did say that earlier, but just a reminder there. Now, not growth, not development, but coronavirus. The coronavirus was the number one word on the lips of millions of Nigerians in the first half of this year. To analyse the trend in the first half of the year and share new insights about the current situation is information consultant Abajide Ogusonwo. Thank you for joining us here Thank on you. the News at 10. I and thought uh, you were going to call me Babajide <laughs> No, no, not making that mistake anymore. But great to see you though. So where does this data from the first half of the year, what does it reveal and what should Nigerians expect this second half? There's a lot. I'd like to start with what um, Fela and Nicola Kuti. Fela Kuti said exactly four decades ago in 1972. Because tonight there are going to be more questions than answers. And that song was called Question, Jam, Answer. Tonight there are lots of questions. And that's because we've seen 28,000 cases since February. Mm. Here's what it means. You know in Lagos here, um, there's a stadium, the Teslim Balogun Stadium. It has a sitting capacity of 25,000. What the coronavirus numbers in Nigeria means is that everyone that has been diagnosed of the coronavirus will not even be able to sit at the Teslim Balogun Stadium, even if it were failed to capacity. Currently because of the numbers. Currently because of the numbers. But again, those are the numbers we've seen um, since the beginning in February. Mm -hmm. But tonight, I'd like us to look at some of the good news and the bad news. Let's take a look at the review of the first half of the year since February. And here's the good news. The good news is that between February and March, yes, there was a multiple of 139 cases. Between March and April, what we've seen is it was a multiple of 14. Between April and May, yes, we saw 1,932 cases to 10,162 cases. That was a multiple of 5.3. Between May and June, yes, the numbers went higher, but they were just, it was just a multiple of 2.5. The summary is we've seen month on month a steady decline in the multiple, the effective reproduction rates of the virus. So that is good news. If I were to summarize the good news, here's what it will look like. In March, if the coronavirus was in a vehicle, it was, the vehicle was moving at 220 kilometer per hour. Based on the numbers we have, or we had as at the end of June, that vehicle is now moving at 160 kilometer per hour. In other words, the coronavirus is still growing, but the rate of growth, its effective reproduction rate on a month-on-month -month basis has been declining. That is good news. Mm -hmm. But here is the bad news. The bad news is globally, for us to say we're easy or we're now flattening the curve, our effective reproduction rate has to be less than one. Currently, our effective reproduction rate is 2.5, and that is the bad news. So people, more people are infecting each other. So one person that has the virus is infecting as much as three people. And until we're able to bring that effective reproduction rate to below one, then the second half of the year perhaps will still propose a lot of challenge. Yeah, and also because we're having uh, people not showing any symptoms of coronavirus, it even makes it more dangerous. So Cross River State is the only state in this country without any official statistics on the coronavirus. 
uh, people, some people have put question marks on that. You know, it's, it's impossible, and here's the two reasons why, and that's because there seems to be a lot of controversy. Well, let's stick to the facts. The fact shows that there are five states and Cameroon bordering Cross River, and if we look at the numbers of those five states that share borders with Cross River and Cameroon, the evidence shows that there are over 13,000 cases, yet the government of Cross River has released no official statistics on coronavirus. Plus... You know, there are nine states in the country that have a lower population to cross river. I'm talking about Ekiti, Baelsa, Abia State, Ebonyi State, and the north central Kwara Nasara states, Kwara Nasara states, and the northeast, Gombe, um, Taraba, and Yobe State. All these nine states have a lower population to cross river. And each of these states have reported cases of coronavirus. Yet, we have no official statistics about what is going on in Cross River. So if there's one word to describe what is going on in Cross River, it will be it's impossible that there is no coronavirus in the States. Yeah, it really makes one wonder really uh, why that is. But is there any evidence to prove that persons who have contracted the coronavirus do develop some immunity against it? Globally, there's still no conclusion that if you ever had the coronavirus, you'll have, you'll have developed immunity. It is expected, but no um, concluding thesis on it. But here's what we found, and that's why I talked about there are now more questions than answer, question, jam, answer. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the discharge rate in Nigeria. Patients who have been discharged, because it seems that there are different species of the coronavirus in Nigeria. And here's what the data as at yesterday night shows. It shows that in the northern region of Nigeria, we've seen 8,347 confirmed cases and 5,201 people have been discharged. In summary, 62%, you heard me right, 62% of everyone who has had the coronavirus living in the northern regions of Nigeria have been discharged, 62%. Let's look at what's going on in the south. 19,820 cases so far of the coronavirus, 6,261 only discharged. Only 32%, you heard me right, only 32% of those living in the southern region of Nigeria have been discharged compared to the 62% mm. discharge rate in the north. So it makes us ask more questions that, is there a different strain of the virus in the north? Mm. Are the doctors being able to give better treatment mm. in the north? What exactly is going on that we're having more people being discharged in the north, and significantly hmm. less people being discharged in the south. That question you, you requires have... answers. Yeah, and you have spoken just like a doctor, even though you're not one. <laughs> but, well, you know, in the final analysis, in the second half of the year, the NCDC, let's let the NCDC keep counting the numbers. What families in Nigeria should do is hmm. count your blessings. Yeah, we should all count our blessings at this time. Abadjide, always a pleasure having you here. Thanks again. The pleasure is all mine, Amarachi. And when the news at 10 returns, 21 persons missing following boat mishap in Benue State. Please join us again. Welcome back to the News at 10. The Cross River State Chapter of the Nigerian Medical Association has withdrawn its services from all medical facilities in the state amid the COVID-19 controversy there. The state's chairman of the association, Agam Ayuk, said in a letter to the Minister of Health that the lives of the doctors are at risk over the COVID-19 situation in the state. The group wondered why the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has not included Cross River in its daily update for COVID-19 after five positive cases were reported. Cross River State is the only one in Nigeria where any case of COVID-19 has not been officially confirmed. 
238 Nigerians who were stranded in Turkey have arrived at the Namda Ziko International Airport, Abuja, today. The returnees are expected to go on a 14-day isolation in line with the guidelines set by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control as well as the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. The Nigerians in Diaspora Commission also confirmed on its Twitter handle that all the returnees tested negative for the virus. Indigenous oil and gas company Saplat Petroleum Development Company for the second time in three months has donated medical and personal protective equipment worth millions of naira to Imo, Edo and Delta state governments to support the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. While receiving the donations, the Imo state government commended Saplat Petroleum Development Company for its support and sense of responsibility at this critical time when states and countries around the world are grappling with the challenges of COVID-19. Representatives from Saplat Petroleum Development Company arriving in the government house in Oweri, the Imo state capital, in a convoy conveying medical supplies. The team, led by the base manager, Eastern Operations, Emeka Yagba, is received by the Deputy Governor, Professor Placid Njoku. They are here to support the state government's fight against COVID-19 with the donation of these items, which include 25 hospital beds, sanitary buckets, 300 pieces of alcohol-based hand sanitizers, infrared thermometers, 300 pieces of face masks, hand gloves, organic soap, transport ventilators, amongst other items. What we are doing today is a fulfillment of a promise we made on April 1 this year. And um, it, is, it will not be the last. But um, um, it is something that we continue to do because as a responsible company, we believe that we have a social responsibility to meet the needs of our immediate environment. The state government commends Saplat for their continuous support also using the opportunity to appeal to indigents to take seriously the protocols put in place by the government to contain the spread of the virus. We'd like to first of all say we are very grateful to Seplat for this very uh, generous gift. Imo people are very lucky. We are getting lots of people make donations like this to them. We can get them to be, to be healthy. As they do that, they also expect that Kimo people will take the necessary precautions that go that are recommended for COVID-19. The company also extends the same gesture to the governments of Delta and Edo states. In Edo state, the items were received at the Stella Basanjo Hospital in Benin City by the Commissioner of Health, Dr. Patrick Okudia. While in Delta State, the items were received at the Specialist Hospital Asaba by the Chairman of the Hospital Management Board, Austin Obidi. The fight against COVID-19 is no doubt a collective one. Such gestures by Saplat will boost the collective fight against the virus in Nigeria. 21 members of Ekan Church Jaha in Benue State have been declared missing after the boat they were traveling in capsized today on the river Benue. The church members, totaling 23, were scheduled to attend a conference across river Benue when the accident occurred. The Benue State Police Public Relations Officer, Catherine Sewese, says a search party by the Marine Police has been deployed to the scene. At the time of this report, two persons had been rescued, while the search continued for 21 other passengers. Some politicians from the Second Republic have thrown their weight behind the ideology of the NGF, of the NCF, beg your pardon. The latest entrants include the former governor of Kaduna State, Mr. Badrabi Musa, the former vice president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Isa Aremu, and the president of Adawa Youth's Consultative Forum, Yerima Shatima. The politicians say their decision is born out of the need to address the security and socio-economic challenges confronting the nation. It comes after some prominent persons initially touted to be part of the founding fathers of the political movement pulled out. Five people who have been my political associates for a very long time 
longer than 20 years ago. So immediately I saw their names, I became interested. I'm now informed that it is a pressure group, it is a civil society uh, organization concerned with the uh, correction of the negative state of the nation which concerns every Nigeria. Is the idea a good idea? Yes, it's what it is. the country okay? No, it's not okay. Is the unit of this country being threatened? Yes, it's being threatened. Do we need to come up with something that will be on an alternative that will checkmate some of the excesses of governance? Yes, it's worth it. And this is some of the consideration we had. For me, anything that will do good for the country, I key into it. And I believe in it. So then at this particular time, I look at this as a clarion call where all hands must be on deck to save the country. Back to environmental issues as rains intensify in the coming days. Proper disposal of waste by Lake Oceans will go a long way towards averting flood disasters resulting from blocked drains and waterways. Our correspondent Victoria Idowu reports that as much as the state government is expected to play a major role in this regard, individuals must adapt to modern ways of managing waste for cleaner environment as well as job creation. Lagos State generates about 13,000 tons of waste on a daily basis made up of industrial, residential or commercial waste. This is as a result of rapid urbanization, infrastructural development and the rise in population which is now well above 22 million according to the World Bank. The state has over the years grappled with the challenge of managing the huge waste, mostly resulting from indiscriminate disposal on its major highways and major roads, as well as unauthorized dump sites. The highway managers who are saddled with the responsibility of cleaning up the highways have a responsibility that comes with a lot of danger. Unfortunately, what they receive as wages do not equate the risk they face. We pay 25,000 to people, but some contractors are paying less than that. It's very shocking and alarming to hear 9,000. We pay 25,000, and we've been paying 25,000 since the minimum, because Lagos State announced the minimum wage. We review because the job is pretty much like a part time job. The waste generated from the homes are moved by the PSP operators who then transport them to the dump sites. But even the state of the dump sites have been a cause of worry for the PSP operators, particularly the Olusosun dump sites located at Ojota area of the state. Well, where the disposal site is not at its best, uh, rains are not always friendly with waste management. I always say this. Now, while the rain uh, is so friendly to a farmer, uh, the rain is, 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 is an enemy to waste management. But all is all about the functionality of planning. Successive governments in the state have promised and failed to either close the dump site or turn it into a biogas facility for power generation. The current administration has also made the same promise. Uh, all we can do is to ensure that Going forward, we manage the dump site well enough to allow us the possibility of a proper closure. So that, that's the essence of the rehab. Many Nigerians may not be used to the idea of waste recycling, but experts say this is one way of effectively managing waste, while at the same time creating jobs and saving the planet. Recycling not, does not just um, reduce wastage or manage your waste, but it's a form of entrepreneurship and job creation for young people, women, and other people that would really find recycling lucrative. Waste is constantly generated in the face of endless human activities, and with the rains pouring heavily in recent times, all necessary measures need to be taken to ensure waste generated are disposed of properly by all concerned and prevent the drainage systems and water channels from getting clogged, thereby resulting in the flooding of the city. Victoria Idowu, Channels Television News. 
Staying with the environment, residents of Doma local government area of Nasarawa State have benefited from the Nigeria Army's civil military operations during its 2020 Nigeria Army Day. Ecological and environmental gestures were extended to residents, just as palliatives were distributed to over 300 vulnerable persons. Our correspondent, Halima Gayom, has a report. Men of the Nigerian Army Force Special Forces Command in Duma local government area in high spirits as they provide ecological support for their host community. They are marking the 2020 Nigerian Army Day and are happy to extend their civil military operations here at Sabongari Settlement, which has been grappling with the challenge of erosion. The people are joyous too. We really appreciate their effort and we pray that may God bless them with their, this effort. Sometimes we come in mass and having a communal effort in order to fix the road, but sometimes we find it very hard. But this coming of soldiers that live within us, at least we appreciate and we keep a value on them. Then to the town, cleaning the streets and clearing drainages. As this year's Army Day is marked during the coronavirus pandemic, palliatives funded by the Chief of Army staff is distributed. 300 selected vulnerable persons assisted by their families to the premises of the Emir Palace receive the palliatives to cushion the effect of COVID-19. We are privileged that Doma is receiving part of the goodwill of the Nigerian Army, not only with your presence in Doma, with the command headquarters of the command, Special Forces Command, but delivering food and other articles of your goodwill to the most ordinary and most needy people of Doma in the entire local government. We are sincerely grateful to the Nigerian Army. I'm very happy because of this they have been providing for us. Because I don't think I can be able to attend this offer, but because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, I've been able to get this thing. I'm very happy. The 4th of July every year remains memorable for men of the Nigerian Army, and they have made it more memorable by extending such memories to host communities. Halima Gayam, Channels Television News. Still ahead on the news of 10, Spain imposes another round of lockdown and Galicia following fresh outbreak of COVID-19. Join us again. Welcome back. Spanish officials have reimposed restrictions on an area of 70,000 people in the northwestern region of Galicia following a COVID-19 outbreak. Under new rules, those traveling for work will be the only ones allowed to leave and enter the coastal district of a marina from midnight of today until Friday. This comes a day out of the northeastern region of Catalonia imposed a similar lo local lockdown. Meanwhile, more than 11.2 million people around the world have contracted the coronavirus, with the United States maintaining its spot as the country with the highest figure. The death toll has also risen above 531,500, with the US, Brazil, the UK and Mexico claiming the highest rates. As at Saturday night, the number of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. and the national death toll reached 129,657. The state of New York reported most cases and the highest death toll in the country, standing at 396,598 and 32,157 respectively. Other states with over 100,000 cases include California, Texas, Florida, New Jersey, Illinois, and Massachusetts. China has reported two newly confirmed COVID-19 cases, making single-digit daily count for the seventh consecutive day. 
Deputy Director of the Beijing CDC, Pang Xiaoguo, said at a regular press conference that as of Saturday, Beijing had reported 334 confirmed infections, since a small surge in COVID-19 cases was traced to the Xinfadi Farm Produce Wholesale Market in southern Beijing's Fengtai District on June 11. Meanwhile, India's Federal Health Ministry says the country recorded 613 new deaths and 24,850 more positive cases of COVID-19 during the past 24 hours, taking the number of deaths to 19,268 and total cases to 673,165 at the last count. It is the highest single-day spike in terms of fresh COVID-19 cases in the country so far. Over in Brazil, an analysis of sewage water samples from last November in Florianopolis, the capital and second largest city of Santa Catarina, Brazil, was found to contain traces of novel coronavirus, so says a research group from the Federal University of Santa Catarina of Brazil. The finding is two months earlier than the first official confirmed case of COVID-19 in the Americas on January 21st, and much earlier than the first reported case in Brazil at the end of February. And finally, the World Health Organization says it is discontinuing hydroxychloroquine and lopinaritinavir arms for its solidarity trial, citing little or no reduction in the mortality of hospitalized COVID-19 patients. The WHO says the decision is in light of the evidence from the solidarity trial interim results. Sports News now reigning UFC welterweight champion Nigeria's Kamaru Usman looks set to now defend his title against America's Jorge Masvidal at UFC 251 on July 11th. Having been at odds with UFC president Dana White over a pay dispute, Masvidal immediately volunteered to take on the on Usman on short notice after scheduled challenger Gilbert Burns tested positive for COVID-19. There are indications all terms have been agreed with the two jetting into Las Vegas. The only thing stopping the mouth-watering bout from going ahead is a positive COVID-19 test from either of the pair. In the English Premier League, Che Adams this evening ended his wait for a first EPL goal with an incredible long-range strike to see Southampton to a shot 1-0 win over Manchester City. Adams was making his 25th top-flight appearance for Saints since his £15 million signing just over a year ago, but he picked up a fine time to break his duck. Liverpool returned to winning ways, clinching their first game at Anfield as EPL champions Thanks to a 2 0 victory against relegation threatened Aston Villa. Newcastle United twice came from behind to deny relegation threatened West Ham a second consecutive Premier League victory for the first time since August. Earlier, John Egan's 80th minute goal helped Sheffield United to a 1 0 draw against Burnley at Turf Moor. Mercedes Valtteri Bottas has won the Austrian Grand Prix, the first of the season, after all but six of the drivers took a knee on the grid before the race in support of Black Lives Matter. Hamilton and Bottas spent the second half of the race struggling with gearbox sensor issues and being told over the team radio to avoid the curbs as much as possible. Charles Leclerc took second after a stirring drive with the uncompetitive Ferrari, while McLaren's Lando Norris took his first podium finish just holding off Hamilton. And the main news again. The Nigerian army authorities say they have intensified their onslaught against Boko Haram and Iswap terrorists. The military says the troops killed 75 insurgents in the month of June alone. 
Flash floods have wreaked havoc in Abeokuta, the Ogun state capital. Residents have been counting their losses after the heavy downpour. And Spain has imposed another round of lockdown on Galicia following fresh outbreak of COVID-19. That's it on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Amarachi Ubani. Stay safe.